Wisdom, let us arise. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus entered Capernaum, and a centurion came forward to him, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home and in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, with soldiers under me, and I say, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard him, he marveled, and he said to those who were following him, truly I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. And the centurion, Jesus said to him, Go be it done, for you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Please be seated. Good morning. salvation of God is rooted and purposed in God alone. That's where it comes from. That's it. We can't save ourselves. What we can do is conform our lives to God and live in obedience to Him so that the salvation that He offers might be appropriated by us. We go to God and we go to him with, with, with gratitude, saying, thank you, Lord, for your love towards me. Thank you, Lord, you are our creator. Thank you, Lord, you are our savior. Thank you, Lord, you have done everything you could possibly do to save us from this prison of darkness and death. He purposes it. He accomplishes it. That's why God became man. Man was separated from God, and that separation is death. It's not only the death at the end of our life, the separation of our soul from our body, but this death would have been eternal had Christ not taken on human flesh and entered death and destroyed it. We know he destroyed death. We know that he conquered death because he rose again. And he rose again because there was no sin in him. Now we're thinking back on what Paul said in the book of Romans, what we heard this morning. He said that we were all sold under sin, but we no longer are. And that's true. We were condemned, in a sense, to separation from God for eternity. Because when Adam sinned and the world fell, he lost the power to come back to him. Jesus, in becoming the second Adam and destroying death, makes possible for us to recover what Adam lost. What did he lose? He lost life. He lost the power to grow into the very likeness of God. That's the purpose for which he was created. In a word, he lost the Holy Spirit. He lost the power. That's restored to us in baptism. God gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power that Adam lost, and the Holy Spirit is, gives us the possibility to commune with God 
in the same way that Adam knew him before he sinned. Death, the separation, the unbridgeable gulf, at least from man's side, has been destroyed. Jesus Christ is that bridge. Jesus Christ is that source, the one who gives us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ makes possible for mankind to come back to God and experience Him, him in the same fullness that Adam had before he sinned. Now Paul says that that the sin no longer has power over us. And it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't have to. Sometimes it does. We yield to it. But it doesn't have to. And that's the key. Because before the Holy Spirit was restored, before Christ came, we were sold to sin, to use the words that, that, that Paul uses. We were in bondage to it. Even though our soul longed for life, it was not possible for man to reach life because that existential chasm, the death, the separation, the gulf between man and God was not yet <clears throat> bridged. Jesus does that. And because it is now bridged, and because the Holy Spirit has now been given to us in baptism, this a new life is offered, we are no longer sold to sin, but we must now, Paul says in, in his reading today, must become slaves of righteousness. So what does this mean in practical terms? What does it mean? It means that we have to remove the sin from our life. And if we remove the sins from our life, if we make the conscious moral decision to live a better life, then what we do is we open up the space where, within which we can appropriate the salvation that God offers. What is sin? Sin is looking for life where there is no life, ultimately. Sin has pleasure, whatever this particular sin might be. But in resisting the sin, what happens? We, we appropriate, we access that power that is given to us by the Holy Spirit so that, that the salvation that God offers might be worked in us. That what was given to us in baptism might be actualized and accomplished. Or, as Paul puts it in a different place in his scripture, that Christ be born in us. And that the Christ that is born in us might grow and that in the fight against sin, because sometimes it's a struggle, that we would be victorious, and the places that sin occupied in our life would now be occupied by the very light and power and love of Jesus Christ, and we become this new creature that he calls us to be, that was again given to us initially in our baptism. That's what Paul is saying. So, when we speak of salvation here, we don't speak of just an intellectual assent. Yeah, I believe in God. Everybody believes in God, in a way. You know, even the atheist who argues against God has to posit his existence in order to argue against him. You know, it's like saying, I don't believe in the sun. What do you mean you don't believe in the sun? It comes up every day, right? If you don't see the sun, it's because your eyes are closed. It's not because the sun doesn't exist. And that's the same way with God. It just is. And, and people might have a darkened heart towards him and not move towards him. But God is. And God's will and intention, as I said, is that he would <coughs> save us and that we might be saved. So in the struggle then against the sin, it's a moral choice because life is a moral enterprise. God comes to us in that struggle. Because the struggle is necessary to appropriate the salvation that he's, he offers. And when we have a taste of that, just even a small taste, we know that it is good. And this is life. And it nourishes our souls. And it nourishes our minds. And we see life differently, more completely, soberly. And we realize that this is the source of meaning. And this is purpose. 
and that this is good, and that there is a congruence between our inner selves and this God who created us, and we're not full. We're not satisfied. We're not nourished. We don't have life unless we're moving in his direction. I mean, this is, you know, I'll use a $35 word. This is an existential reality, which is a nice way of saying is this is the way it really is. It really is. And life itself, because God is good, sometimes life itself has to knock us around a little bit to teach us that. I wish I could say we were all saints. The truth is we're not. Okay? <laughs> But we are works in progress, and if we're progressing to the Lord, we're on the right path, and God himself is pleased. The scripture says that. The angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who repents. So if you feel down because you sinned, you didn't measure up to where you wanted to be, remember, the Lord rejoices whenever the heart turns towards him. That's all. Remember that. And remember too, this is key, you have to remember this, that salvation is purposed by God alone. So if we fall, and we stumble, and if we sin, even if we do something real bad, it's God's will that we're saved. And that's why he says, I will never leave you or forsake you, that you can pick yourself up and uh, dust yourself off, actually the angels will dust you off, right? <laughs> and the Lord will say, we're going we're gonna to start again, and we're going to try again, and you know what? We might make it this time. A righteous man, the scripture says, see scripture is full of this, it's just beautiful, a righteous man picks himself up seven times, right? So even if you stumble, and you stumble again, and you stumble a third time, what's important? What's important is picking yourself up and keep going. Remember that the Lord said, he wasn't a, a, a child of, a, of the children of Israel, of the house of Israel. This man was essentially a Gentile who came to Christ. And I'm talking about the gospel lesson. All he had to do was ask for the healing. And the Lord says what? Yes. I will heal. That's the way he is. Good, loving God who loves mankind. The Anthropos. Who is the one that is both the, the source and the completion of our salvation. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, may the Lord have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Please rise. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That always guarded by your power, to you we may give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.